This is going to be a video about how to make a cyanotype that has both a positive side and a negative side. That's not metaphorical, it's literal. As you can see, I've made a cyanotype, which is a form of light print, and I've made it of this milk bottle. And that's the resulting cyanotype on one side, and that's the resulting cyanotype on the other side. The yellow side on the right, I've sensitized with more cyanotype chemistry. So we have an exposed side on the right, and I've now folded the exposed side over onto the unexposed piece of cyanotype paper. I'm going to try to fold it as evenly as I can. And I'm doing this one-handed because a camera operator is expensive, besides myself. And I'm trying to basically line the paper up with its corner. So I just want to fold it right down the middle. And that's decent enough. Now, I'm going to put that into a contact printing frame. And that's basically a regular photo frame that is pressing against the cyanotype very hard and firm. That way it makes complete contact with its own self. I'm going to put it face down so that the image will receive sunlight. That sunlight will transmit through the paper, through the back of itself, and onto the unexposed cyanotype paper that is yellow. We're going to close the contact printing frame, and it needs two hands. So I'm going to put the camera between my knees. We'll do a jump cut. There we go. And now it's easier. We now have our cyanotype, two-sided, loaded into our contact printing frame. It's time to expose our cyanotype to sunlight. I'm going to do that by taking it right out onto my kitchen roof, as we all have, or we don't. I'm lucky. I'm going to take this cyanotype, put it right there in the sun, cloudy-ish sun, as you can see from the reflection on the glass, and I've got a GoPro recording so we can actually watch this process happen. Again, not exciting, but it sure is fun to watch time pass at a faster rate than real time. So let's get real close to the GoPro and see what it shows us. I'll play a little music too. I think overall it's been given about three or four hours and then it's time for me to check it. So I'll just come back out, remove the cyanotype from the roof, yeah, and uh, see what the results are. Gotta be real careful. There we go. It's heavy. It's a heavy frame. Lots of glass. This thing was made at least in 1900 or so. Now we're gonna flip this over and I'm gonna need to open it up. It's a punk. It's very satisfying. Punk. There we go. And now I can actually even see the cyanotype has made such an impression on one side it's actually almost printed through to the other unexposed side. Here's what it looks like in its undeveloped state on the left and its regular state on the right and vice versa, developed on the left, unexposed on the right. And now that we've exposed one side of our two-sided cyanotype, I'm gonna fold the paper over in the exact same way to, ref to get the other side of it. And I've got this little indication here of where it originally folded. There's a slightly darker line of exposed cyanotype just above an unexposed cyanotype line. If you can see right above my index finger, that's the exposed cyanotype line, and here, I'll, I'll remove it. And that unexposed cyanotype line is what I'm going to put the paper directly over. We want to make this a perfectly registered image with the one we recorded on the other side. So we want to get that alignment as much as we can the same. And again, one-handed, you know, there's some room for error. This is not exact science. In fact, exact science isn't even exact science. Now we have it pretty much loaded up the same way. I'm going to put it back in the contact printing frame and I'm going to put the back on it and I'm going to actually put the camera between my knees again. That's a form of multitasking. And there we go. There we go. And it's, you get, these are very strong, these metal, metal clamps here. So it takes a decent amount of force to push them in. And uh, once they are in there, they're, they're not letting that cyanotype move one bit. So let's Turn this back over, make sure we got the right side facing out, and we're ready to put it back out in the sun. Hey, there I am, hi. This time, I'm gonna put it on the roof again, 
but I'm actually going to, you'll see in a moment, I'm going to angle the contact printing frame because I want the sun to be hitting it at a nearly perpendicular angle. The sun is now lower on the horizon, so I'm making sure that I've put the contact printing frame a little bit against the wall so it has the right angle to hit the sun. And it's another three or four hours. And time passes. And now we get to look and see what our actual results are from this double exposure experiment. So let's remove our contact printing frame from the roof again. Let us turn it over to see what the, the back looks like. Well, let's turn it over so we can open it. And then we will be able to see what the back looks like. That's our normal side that we saw before. How does our new exposure look? Okay, looks like a big dark smudge. That's what we like on a cyanotype. That indicates that there is something on this paper that will stick around once we develop it. That dark gray on the left of the unexposed cyanotype page, that's the stuff that's gonna stay. The lighter green blue, that's not. And this is just water. This is how we develop cyanotypes. We use our, our paper right in the water and I just kind of coat it a little bit and then once it's saturated, we can kind of pretend we're an old timey prospector and like panning for gold. So just a light back and forth. This paper is almost, almost thin. It's not thin, but it's almost thin. And thin paper tends to rip. So I'm being careful as I manipulate this paper to try to touch it in the middle because that's probably the strongest part and I don't want it to rip. And let's see what this, there we go. It's looking, it, it, it's looking like nothing I could have accounted for. Let's give it a little extra water. This is just plain old water right out of the tap. We are lucky enough to have water that comes out of our faucets in this country and I, every day I'm grateful that I get to use it to have such fun. And there we go. This is what it looks like to make a single cyanotype that contains a positive and a negative on the same image. I'm not sure what to call this yet. I'm thinking uh, a negative because that would be a combination of uh, negative and positive. So let's go with that. We've coined it. This negative, let's look at the, right, uh, the left side of the negative. We can read the text. By consuming more plant-based foods, we reduced our environmental blah. CRV redemption value. What does it look like on the right? Well, it's the same thing, but reversed. Neato. Uh, let's give it a little more of a wash. There's still some developer that's coming out of this. And I'm gonna grab a screen that my uncle, who is in the screen door repair business, has prepared for me. I use this to dry the cyanotypes. I'm gonna lift it up by the middle because I've bent it twice in the middle. So that's practically the weakest part of this paper right now. So that's where I want to take care to touch. And um, that's not the best laying of cyanotype on screen I've done in my life, but it will get the job done for this video. I'm just going to adjust it a little bit to kind of remove the wrinkles. There we go. And I'm going to just kind of angle it downward directly over the water trough so that some of the water can drip off this cyanotype. This is kind of a, a rapid dry process. I mean, it's rapid as a relative term. This process will take about a half an hour to fully dry once I set the cyanotype on the ground. But the end result is unique. So a cyanotype negative born here, I hope it was enjoyed.